Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It is November the 9th, 2011, and I'm on a roll tonight. This is my second tutorial, and this tutorial is tutorial number nine, Effect Stream Part 3, slash a new tutorial called Echo Effect. But since it relies on the previous tutorials in the Effect Stream series, I'm just going to call it Effect Stream Part 3 and be done with it. Sorry for the sort of long winded explanation there. Right then, you can go and grab the code for Effect Stream Part 2 right off my website. It's www.giawa.com slash tutorials. Or if you've been following along, you can use the awesome code that you've been writing. And this code, of course, is using the N-Audio framework, which is available for free at naudio.codeplex.com. Right, we'll jump right into it. So we've built up our Effect Stream class. We've used our Effect Stream class to intercept the floating point buffer that's being passed to our direct sound out object. And then we've gone and converted that into a floating point number here. Done something with it, we're calling some uh, I effect objects, and then we're converting it back into a byte array, storing it back into our buffer. So all that's left to do is to write a couple fancy effects, try it out, make sure it all works, and that's what we're going to do in this tutorial. So I'm going to go and create my first effect, and as you could probably have guessed because I've mentioned it a few times, I'm going to make an echo effect. All right. All I need is system.collections.generic. I'm going to create a class called echo, and it has to implement our I effect interface. Now there's two things that I'm going to associate with my echo effect. The first is going to be the length of the echo effect, meaning how many samples will pass before the echo will be reintroduced back into the current sample. That might not have made much sense. Let me try that again. It's the length of time basically or the number of samples before the echo comes back and is reintroduced back into the stream as an actual echo. So when you yell echo, you have so many samples or so much length in time before your echo actually comes back and is perceptible and you can hear it. I didn't explain that very well but we're just going to run with it. Okay. So I'm going to have an integer, and I'm just going to call it echo length. I'm going to make it private set for now. And the other thing I'm going to do is have a weighting factor, which is the amount of echo that's reintroduced back in. Perfect, so we've got our get and set methods, and now I'm going to make my constructor, which is going to take a length, an echo length, and by default I'll make it 20,000 samples, which is usually about half a second depending on the sample rate. And then I'm also going to have a factor, and I'll make it 0.5 for now. And all I really need to do here is I need to go and set echo length to that length, and I also need to set echo factor to that factor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the system.collections.generic objects called a queue to actually queue up my samples. I'll make my queue my echo length and then as soon as it stores my echo length worth of samples I'm going to start to reintroduce those samples back into my sound. So I'm going to have a queue of floating point numbers which are samples being pushed into this queue and I'm just going to call this samples. So here I should set samples to new queue and then what I'll do is I'll push a number of samples into that queue where the number of samples is my echo length. And these samples are just going to contain zero to begin with. Right then, so the next thing to do is to actually implement our interface member apply effect. I think I can do that somewhere up here. Um, no, nope. I was trying to be snazzy. Oh, there we go. Implement interface. Cool. There we go. So now what I'll do is I'll go and get a sample out of the queue and apply it to my current sample and then return that as the applied effect. Right then. So we can return our sample. Let me do this correctly first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to queue up this current sample, push it into the queue, and then I'll return our sample plus our weighting factor multiplied by the next sample in the queue. Right then, that's it. So we're 
pushing our current sample onto the queue and then pulling a sample out of the queue, multiplying it by our echo factor and adding it back into the sample. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to make sure that this number here does not lie outside the range of minus one to plus one. A floating point sample coming from N audio is normalized to one. So it's always going to be between minus one and plus one. And if we throw a number out of here that is larger than that, problems could definitely ensue. So what I'll do is I'll use the math library to use max and min to ensure that this sample is between minus one and plus one. Excellent. So now all that's left to do is actually go and add this echo effect to our echo stream. And the way I'll do that is I'll do that in our main form here. And I'll add enough so that there's one echo effect for each channel in my audio source. So to do that, I'll get the wave format channels. And then I'll go and add to my effects a new echo effect for each wave format channel. So now each channel of my effect stream has its own echo effect assigned to it and that way the samples don't get misaligned. You have the left samples going into the left side queue and you've got the right samples going to the right side queue, etc. So I'll run this and we should hear an echo when I play my voice. Hello, hello. Testing, testing. Echo, echo. Pretty cool, echo, right? Echo. All right, that's all there is to it. So it looks like our effect stream is working quite well. And as soon as I exit from this, I will remind you that this source code is going to be posted at giwa.com slash tutorials. Thank you for watching, and as always, have fun coding.